American forces continued their withdrawal from northern Syria today. Defense Secretary Mark Esper says they're headed for Iraq, not home, as President Trump promised. Left behind, America's ally, the Kurds. As Holly Williams reports, a ceasefire about to end could determine their fate. There were reports of sporadic clashes between Turkish-led forces and Kurdish fighters in Syria today, and Turkey said one of its soldiers was killed. But for now, the ceasefire seems to be mostly holding. Remember, this Turkish incursion began last week after President Trump effectively opened the door to Turkey, announcing that U.S. forces would pull back from the border. And now U.S. troops are in the process of withdrawing entirely from eastern Syria. Kurdish-led forces were America's closest partners on the ground in Syria in the fight against ISIS. They are now the target of Turkey's offensive and say they've been betrayed by the U.S. Turkey claims the Kurdish-led group is a terrorist organization. President Trump called the ceasefire, which was negotiated by Vice President Mike Pence and Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan last week, a, quote, great day for civilization. But it's due to expire on Tuesday. Kurdish forces say they pulled out of one town today, but Turkey says they need to withdraw from a nearly 300-mile stretch of border or it will renew its assault. The other impact of the U.S. withdrawal is to hand even greater influence to Russia. Turkey's President Erdogan will meet the Russian President Vladimir Putin on Tuesday, and the future of eastern Syria could be decided at that meeting, at which the United States will play no part. Elaine. I'd like to say shalom, giving all praises to Yahweh Bashim al Shah. Also, give a double honor to the elders of GMS and honor to the Akiyam. And peace and blessings to you, brothers and sisters that listen, hope for the elect. Call Allahim, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, man. And um, the wars and rumors of wars, man. The scriptures is being fulfilled every single day, man. Right? And um, that's Yahweh Bashim al Shah, you know, showing us the signs of the times, man. I wanted to get to this video last week, but finally get time right now to do it so um, um as we see now in the news all this is leading to the third world's war man this is what as watchmen this will be constantly reporting man you know bringing out you know not only national news but international man okay because these wars they tie tie in with the global economy okay that's why um as we see um you have <laughs> Turkey versus Syria, man. Okay, you have the Turkish people versus the Kurds. All right, which the Kurds are some group that's um, in Iran and Iraq and Syria. Okay, now America's withdrawn their troops, so now that's pretty much given the Turkish government because they've been at war with these people for years, decades, the green light to attack them, man. And Trump is telling Turkey, well, if you guys do that. We're going to impose sanctions. Okay, but Trump is, you know, withdrawing U.S. troops from those regions. But, um, you know, these people don't know. They're preparing for an even bigger war. And that war is going to be with what? Iran, man. Okay. No matter you guys try to pull away the will of the most size for you, you guys, you other nations to destroy each other, man. All right. As scripture said, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall fall upon them. So, ain't no leaving that region. You guys are stuck there. All right? Remember when dumbass George Bush said this years ago? He said God told him to go into Iraq. Which you are right about that, man. The Heavenly Father did send you over there. All right? And I'm going to read the precept in a minute. Matter of fact, let me read this article. Okay. Read this real quick. It says Saudi Crown Prince, and you also got what Saudi Arabia going back and forth with Iran, and also Israel going back and forth with Iran. Okay, and you also have Russia in the mix. You also have China, the um, the trade war with China, man. All these nations, man, going back and forth indirectly, directly and indirectly, man. Okay, that's the wars and rumors of wars. I'm reading in a minute. Saudi Crown Prince war with Iran could mean total collapse of the global economy which it says Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman said in an interview at Sunday that a war between his country and Iran could destroy the global economy the region represents 30 percent of the world's energy supplies as you know that's an oil rich nation about 20 percent of global trade passages 
and about 4% of the world GDP gross domestic product. Imagine all these three things stop, he told CBS 60 Minutes in an interview. This means a total collapse of the global economy and not just Saudi Arabia or the Middle East countries. Right? Which, yeah, it is going to lead to a, um, a collapse in the, um, the global economy, man. Okay? Because, um... You had Iran, them other nations, they itching to get back at America, man. That's why they shot down their drones and captured one, I think, um, one of the British oil ships. You see? Those are all acts of war, man. Because America pretty much invaded those countries, man. And they don't think there's going to be any repercussions for their actions. They unjustly went into Afghanistan, claiming about some 9-11, which, ne um, which was an inside job. They took down Hussein and said that um, he was funding terrorism, which was a lie. He has weapons of mass destruction, but that was another lie. All right. You had um, them funding terrorism over there in Syria, man. They took down Gaddafi. They did all these things, man. So now these other nations, the scripture saying that what? Let's get some precepts. Right, let me start with this Exodus chapter 15 verse 3 it says while well, you people get ready for Halloween real terrors is coming man it says Exodus 15 verse 3 Yahweh Bashim Shah is a man of war Yahweh Bashim Shah is his name okay and this was a song that the children of Israel just was singing after um, the Most High um, destroyed the Egyptians, man. Destroyed Pharaoh and his chariots. Okay. By drowning them in the, um, the sea. So, the Most High is a man of war. And he's using his angels, the Allah Hayyam, to to bring you nations down in the Middle East, man. And have you guys, as far as Russia and America and China, and you have these other Middle Eastern nations to come up against each other. All right, that's why I quoted the scripture, but I'm gonna read it Matthew 24. I won't do nothing too long, okay? It's more, I want to do more commentary than anything, but uh, let's get these precepts. It says Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came about him privately, saying, Tell us. When shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world, man? Okay. Disciples is asking. So I remember we had some some camel jockey Arab come up, I think a month back, talking about you have to read the heavens and all that garbage. Which the scripture does say signs in the sun and the moon, but it, it doesn't say get involved in the zodiac. The scripture says what? You have to what? They asking. What's going to be the sign of thy coming in the end of the world? Yahweh Shai is giving him of things what to look forward to, man. All right. Now, um, it says, um, and what did Yahweh Shai say? Verse 4 And Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Mashiach, and shall deceive many, which we know Cesare Bourget did that. Okay? And there are many other false Christs. But the main Christ people look to right now is that white Jesus, which that's been cast down. Right? And he shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. You're going to hear of actual wars and rumors of wars, man. So a lot of these is going on right now. There's rumors of wars. Okay? Iran, Saudi Arabia. Iran want to strike Israel, Russia, and America, you know, the Cold War for such a long time, but it's going to actually get physical, the trade war between America and China, that's the what, the rumors of wars, man, okay, so you're going to have wars within nations, and not only do you have wars within nations, you're also going to have what, commotions, insurrections, in countries, okay, you have a lot of insurrections, man, so I'm going to do another video on that have insurrections in Lebanon and you got one in Chile now you got one in Haiti um, there's another um, one that I think another insurrection that was going on this week you got you got so much man 
from Chile to Spain. I think it was um, um you have Haiti, uh, Hong Kong. That's the, one of the biggest one in the news as well. That Hong Kong man, right? Because they want nothing. They don't want to be transferred back to the mainland China. So these are the wars and rumors of wars. Okay, that Yahweh Shai said to look out for, man. That's the time period that we live in. Okay, that's what he said. Um, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So, all these things must come to pass, and we're seeing it coming to pass. Right, it's playing out right in front of our very eyes, man. All right, but he's like Yahweh Shai said, the end is not yet. Because what's the end? The mark of the beast, which we see, it's um. Is being promoted more and more and world war three which these wars and rumors of wars these small skirmishes between nations is going to lead to a bigger war all right that's why the most high said let me get jeremiah 51 jeremiah 51 that whole jeremiah 51 is going in on um future babylon it's not talking about ancient babylon Jeremiah 51 and 2 does say Yahweh Hashem I will rise up against Babylon, against them that dwell in the midst of them, that rise up against me, a destroying wind, nuclear destruction, and I will send fan unto Babylon fanners. So that's all these little skirmishes, man, going back and forth with these nations that shall fan her and shall empty her land. So these skirmishes are going to lead to World War Three, man, and World War Three is going to what destroy America, Babylon. For in the day of trouble they shall be against her round about. So all these nations going to be against America and they're going to shoot their missiles on Babylon, man. Okay. Let's see if there's another precept I want to pull. So we're in a time of war, man. And ultimately, man, not only America going to go up in flames, man, you fake ass Jews, man. Okay. Y'all see y'all celebrating some of the so-called high holy day. You y'all living, y'all in the biggest bubble. <laughs> That's the, the greatest lie ever told, man. Okay? You, um, fake, uh, fake Jews, man. Okay? Matter of fact, let me see um, if I get this preset. No, I quoted this, but let me, let me read this one. Okay, y'all gonna be destroyed, man. This is the most I also said. I had this scripture in my mind. I'm going to read it. Ezekiel 38. Ezekiel 38. And the word of Yahweh Shemel Shah came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against God, the land of Magog. They are going into the Russians. The chief prince of Meshach and Tubal and prophesy against them. That's where the ancient Japhites used to dwell. But now we know Esau dwells there. Okay? And thus and say, thus say Behab Bashim al Sham, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, and the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. So most eyes against y'all, man. That's what he's gonna have y'all fight and destroy each other. Okay, the most is known for doing that. I think that's also <laughs> I can make this lesson longer, but I just want to get straight to the point. When you read the children of the time of Josephat, Second Chronicles, the twentieth chapter, when they were coming up against the children of Israel, I think it's Second Chronicles twenty. Let me see real quick. It was um yeah, it was Moab, Ammon, and also Edom was coming up against Josephat, and Josephat said a prayer, and the Most High caused those nations to de destroy one another, man. All right. Let me see if I find. Mm. Let me see. Set Chronicles twenty. <laughs> Spirit got me moving another way. Let's go into some history. Set Chronicles twenty shall come to pass after this also that the children of Moab, the Chinese, and the children of Ammon, the Japanese, all right. You know, the, the Chinese, the so-called Koreans, the Japanese. It says, and with other Ammonites 
came against Josephat to battle, and they came, and they came some to told Josephat, saying, They come with a great multitude against thee from beyond on this side in Syria, <laughs> which is at war today, man, spiritual. And behold, they be at Azan Tamar, which is in Endegi. And Josephat feared and set himself to seek Yahweh Shah and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. Show you how powerful fasting is, man. All right. So Joseph adds to the prayer and. Um, let me see what the Mosai said here. Then 14. Then Jezeel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jeel, the son of Mathaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came. The spirit of Yahweh Shem in the midst of the congregation. So the Mosai put the spirit on his brother. And he said, Harking all the Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, thou King Josephat, which is spiritual, because I'm going to read that in a minute, man. Because the Most High is gathering y'all in the valley of Jehoshaphat. All right, all you nations, I'm going to get that precept. It says, And thou King Josephat, thus save Yahweh Shemel Shah unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but the Most High, man. And that's the truth, man. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up against the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. And ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves standing still, and see the salvation of Yahweh Bashem Yashah with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for Yahweh Bashem Yashah will be with you, man. You see? And let me see if I get the what actually happened so let's read it says verse 23 but the children of Moab and Ammon stood up against the inhabitants no 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 let's read verse 22 and when they began to sing and praise Yahweh Shemel Shah set ambushments against the children of Moab and Ammon and Mount Seir and Edomites which were come up against Judah and they were smitten Let me read verse 20. Let me start a little further up. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in Yahweh Shemel Shai, your power, so you shall be established. Believe his prophets, so you shall prosper. That's what we tell our people every week, man. The only way you're going to prosper is by listening to the prophets, man. And returning back to your power, repenting, fasting, praying, and getting in order, man. Right, and when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto Yahweh Shemel Shah that they should praise the beauty of his holiness as they went out before the army, and to say, Praise Yahweh Shemel Shah for his mercy endure forever. And when they began to sing and to praise Yahweh Shemel Shah, set ambushments against the children of Moab, Ammon, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Moab and Ammon stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, so instead of fighting against Judah, they all turned on each other utterly to slay and destroy them and when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir everyone helped to destroy another so the Most High they came up against us but the Most High put the spirit on them for them to destroy one another man and that's the same thing that's happening right now was all you nations had your hand in the slave trade so the Most High like in times past He's causing all y'all to go down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, which is spiritual because Jehoshaphat was the king um, when this happened here, man. Y'all going down to the valley of Jehoshaphat to destroy one another, man. Because that's the vengeance that he's going to take upon y'all for touching his people, man. All right. Read verse 27. Then when they returned, every man of Judah and Jerusalem... And Joseph had in the forefront of them to go against them, Jerusalem, with joy. For Yahweh Shem Yashah had made them to rejoice over their enemies. And they came to Jerusalem with psalteries and harps and trumpets unto the house of the Most High, Yahweh Shem Yashah. And the fear of the Most High was on all, on all the kingdoms of these countries. And when they had heard that Yahweh Shem Yashah fought against the enemies of Israel, and that's going to happen again, man. See, just like in times past, it's going to happen again, man. Right? That's what the Most High says, Zephaniah 3, verse 8. He's talking to the Israelites in the elect. 
He said, therefore, wait upon me, safely harbor Shemel Shah, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations. That's what he's doing right now. That I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured by the fire of my jealousy, man. Okay? So, boy. It's like in times past, man. The Most High is gathering all of y'all. Alright? Just to be destroyed, man. Which is spiritual. I read in times past that happened during the time of King Josephat. But now he's doing the same thing again. Okay? That's why he said what? Zeph Joel chapter 3, verse 12. The Most High said, Let the heathen be awakened, which is happening right now, and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, Yahweh Shapat, the Most High's judgment. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. So we see it happening now. Right? We see Turkey, Syria, Saudi Arabia. Israel, America, Russia, China, okay? You even got India over there, Pakistan, they have that back and forth, all right? So all you nations, you tied into this World War Three, man. And there the Most High is going to judge y'all, man. So brakata Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah, man. Because we're going to get the victory off our enemies, man. We in that time right now. So we're just going to keep prophesying. All right. And, you know, God, just stay in the spirit, man. Keep fighting. Keep enduring. All right. Because our salvation is not that. I'm going to say Shalom.